Good morning, Christian Mission! It's good to see you here this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have a theme. Be, be still and know that I am God. Psalm 4610. And that's exactly what it starts with in 4610. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. We're continuing on with our theme of good. Because uh, as John Gill says in his commentary, what this means is it makes all things work together for good to them. Which is taken out of Romans 8.28. And Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And it says in the Amplified, We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to His design and purpose. And in Romans 8.28, that word good in the Greek is agathos. And part of the definition of agathos is what we're looking at this morning is honorable. And he puts it up there. And if you look down there at the very, towards the very bottom, you can see it. It says honorable. And so I was thinking about honorable. And I was looking on the uh, internet. And I don't know who said this, but I read this. It said Living with honor reminds us of who we really are, who God is, and how much he loves those around us. Living with honor reminds us of who we really are, who God is, and how much he loves those around us. And he causes all things to work together for honor for those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose, because that's part of the definition of good, of what we're looking at this morning. And I know one thing that the Bible says about honor and honoring and honorable is to honor God. We are supposed to be honoring God all the time. By the way, happy birthday, Rick, tomorrow. I know tomorrow's your birthday. Happy birthday to you since we had a couple other ones. Milo said you the right now in the middle of the sermon. Thank you. That's good enough. Let's close in prayer. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to the game. <laughs> let's go to the game. Not time yet. Although they're both gone. No, Aaron took Aaron the, took the girls. girls' back. Okay, here we back here. Psalm 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. What about in the day of good times? We should be honoring them in the day of trouble. We should be honoring them in the good times. Because we have both. We have good seasons. We have difficult seasons. We have up seasons. We have down seasons. We have all the above. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Call on me in the day of good. Call on me when things are going great. Call on me. God wants us to call on him. All the time. Just like uh, I love it when my children stop by. When I get to see them. When they call on me. And uh, if those who knew my dad, he got to be a little of a pain with it, but everybody loved my dad because he was calling people and checking on them and calling on them. And my dad would call me at least six to eight times a day, every day. And I'm not exaggerating. At least he would call me all the time. And uh, he would want to talk about this and talk about this and check on this or that. And sometimes he just wanted to hear my voice. And there would be numerous times he would call me and I, we'd hang up. And as soon as I hung up, the phone was ringing again almost. I almost didn't even, back then, of course, it was the old phones when we actually had the phone and you had the, <laughs> you know, and the old digital and then the push button. And he would call all the, and sometimes it got so much it almost... I'd be like, leave me alone. I need to get some stuff done, you know. <laughs> it's never that way with God. It's never that way with God. Psalm 29, 1 and 2 says, and this is the New Living Translation, Honor the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honor the Lord for His glory and strength. 
honor the Lord for the glory of his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Now, there are a lot of people who don't know who God is and they don't honor him and bring him honor. But any person who knows the Lord personally, we should be honoring him all the time because everything we have, all of who we are, every single piece is given to us by God. God's word says even the ability to make money is given to us by him. All our gifts, all our strengths, all our talents, all of that is just God given to us. There's really no such thing as a self-made man because God made the man and gave him the gifts and abilities and talents. Now they can take them and use them and definitely it, God wants us to do that. But ultimately we're, we'll never be a self-made man because God's behind it. It says in Proverbs 3.9, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. You know, uh, I've heard pastors say a person's pocketbook is the last part of a person to get saved. It's like they accept the Lord, they come to know the Lord, but to get the pocketbook out and to start tithing and start giving to God it's the last thing to happen. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I can understand uh, thinking behind it. And I can understand it. But I'll, I'll, this is off the side just a little bit. I'm going to share this with you anyway. I can just share you for Aaron and I that we have always given to God first. Always. Even when we didn't have it, we gave it anyway. Believing that God would meet us. And God met us every single time. There hasn't been a time where God didn't meet us. And there were times, especially when we were younger, when the finances, you'd get a little bit, and then you'd get behind and have to borrow money, and you try to come back even, and then you, you know, you know, financially you kind of go up and down like that. And when we were down, we would still give. And I can tell you that's my personal testimony, and I oversee our finances, so I'm the one who writes the check and gives it. And I can tell you that Aaron and I have always given, and God's always met our needs. Doesn't matter what is that, a Philippians 4.19. And, uh, and we can stand on that. Okay, honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. In other words, the first fruits. The first fruits are normally the best. Give God your best. Honor Him in giving Him you are best. You see, the first fruits, like uh, I used to have a garden in my backyard. And I still have two grapevines. I still have artichoke plants. I have strawberry plants because they're implanted a couple, even though I told her not to because they take over. <laughs> and we have some green onions, and she wants me to plant it again this year. And the artichokes, they move. The artichoke plants actually move. I started with three back against the fence, and now they're out towards the middle, and every year they start kind of, they just kind of go like this around. I didn't know. It was just interesting the way that works out. When the first artichokes we get of the years are great big, really good artichokes. And then the second season comes through, and they're smaller. Sometimes they'll produce three times, and you have these tiny little artichokes. They're not even artichokes. They're just artichokes. They're not even big enough to be an artichoke. Give God your best. And when you give the first fruits, when you give the first of your produce, you're saying, God, I'm giving to you, believing and knowing that you're going to take care of this and continue to produce more. So I'm going to give, we don't wait till the very end where we take all our own and all ourselves and we make sure it's all us. We give to God first. We honor God Amen. first in our wealth, in our produce, in every area of our life, we should be doing this. How do we do this? Well, if you skip back like four verses down to verse 5 in Proverbs 3, 5. Are you going to put that up for, my, up for me, Mikey? <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He will... Direct your paths. 
Most of us know that scripture. No, it's actually, I think it's five and six there actually. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. If you're not going to trust in the Lord with all your heart, you have to lean on your own understanding. Because you're not going to have any other place to go. And this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own unto your own understanding fits very much in with our theme and with Romans 8 28 be still and know that I am God and that he causes all things to work together for good and all things to work together for honor for those who love him and are called according to his purpose trust and trusting you know I heard the story it's supposed to be a true story the guy's name I think was Blondin and uh, they had a, a tightrope across Niagara Falls. And he took his stick and he stood there before the crowd and says, who believes I can walk there and walk back? And people are saying, yeah, I believe you can do that. I think you can do that. And I don't think it was real windy or anything. And they were all saying, yeah, we believe. Yeah, I believe you can do it. I believe. And he did. He walked across and he walked back and he started talking to him again and saying, do you guys believe I can do it again? Yeah. How many? And everyone said, I believe you can do it again. Do you believe I can do it again? Yeah, I believe you can do it again. Who's going to get on my shoulders and go with me? <laughs> Now, that's just one too far. <laughs> See, that takes real trust. It's easy to stand on the sidelines and say, I believe. It's another thing to jump into the game, to jump into the pit, and to get involved, and to really trust, and really believe, and really reach out, and base our lives upon it. But that's the only true way to truly honor God is when we trust in the Lord with all our heart. That's the way we really, truly, truly, truly start honoring Him. And then we're not leaning on our own understanding. It doesn't make sense in the natural world when you don't have enough money to give to God to give to God anyway. That doesn't make sense. But that's what God's Word tells us to do. And even though it doesn't make sense, that's who our God is. And I've always tried to be, I try to be the person who really walks my talk. Not just go through the motions. I don't just get up here and preach on Sunday morning and do a really good job doing it. <laughs> no, just kidding. I try to walk what it is to be a Christian. I try to live my faith. Faith without works is dead. And I try to live my faith out every single day. And I'm putting my trust in the Lord. Just like you are together. When we're, we're, we put our trust in the Lord. And it doesn't make sense. But I'm telling you, when we do it God's way, God meets us every single time. And we honor Him by doing it. A couple more scriptures. I have a bunch more. I don't think I'm going to go through all these. You know what? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to jump down to 1 Timothy 6, 13 through 16, Mikey. It says, I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who testify the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the proper time. Who He who was blessed and only sovereign... The King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone possesses immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, who no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. And it says in 1 Timothy 1, 17, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. When I was reading that scripture, did anybody have that song going through their mind? We used to sing this verse. You guys remember that? Mom and I are the only ones? Okay. I found it, Mom. Good job. Thank you. 
Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And then it says in Revelation 4, 9 through 11, and when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. So the Bible tells us to honor God. And like I said, we should be honoring God with every cell of our life, of all of who we are. And then the Bible tells us to honor each other. It says in Romans 12, 9 through 13, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. We're to honor each other. Now, when uh, Jake, my son, he left. <laughs> when he played t-ball, which is baseball t-ball, he, uh, you have to understand, when the kids play t-ball, they're like, Ezra's playing, he turns four in, on the, tomorrow. <laughs> His birth, Ezra turns four tomorrow. So he's four years old, he's going to be playing t-ball today. When the ball's hit to the infield, one of the kids picks it up and tries to throw it over. When the ball's hit to the outfield, every other kid who's not on the infield, every other kid on the team's in the outfield. So there's little boys everywhere, right? When the ball goes that far, it's a dog pile. They're jumping on each other. Two or three of them come up crying. <laughs> The kids running all over the place. Things are happening everywhere. When Jake was playing t-ball, two coaches got into a fist fight during the game. <laughs> Which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. So that year, the league called me and asked me to coach. And uh, I had a friend who was on the board of the league. And I said... Did you give him my name? He said, no, I promise I didn't. I did not give him your name. But somehow they found out that I played baseball in college, and so they called me, and I said, sure, I'd coach for him. And uh, when Jake was a 10-year-old, they uh, took two 10-year-olds two uh, for every team and put them up with the 11- and 12-year-olds. And so uh, however many major league teams were the 11-12s, they all had at least two 10-year-olds on the team, and I think it was the first year they tried it. And Jake went up there, and the league told me after the season he was the only kid who had a good experience playing. All the other 10-year-olds didn't have a good experience, not one of them. Mm -hmm. But Jake did really well and had a real good season. He was the only one. So I'm coaching the team. I have this kid on the team who's a 10-year-old, and, uh, and it was okay. And then we're 11-year-olds, right? And in Little League, you have to play two innings and get one at bat. And uh, this kid was an 11-year-old. Here was the other thing. If you were a 10-year-old in the majors, you were automatically on the all-star team. So I'm coaching Jake's 11, this kid's 11, and uh, he doesn't play the whole game. And uh, he gets angry, and he starts cussing out one of my coaches during practice, using really foul language and just cussing him out. And uh, then someone told me, so I went up and talked to the kid, and we had a big talk about it. And I called his house that night to talk with his parents. And his dad answers the phone. And his dad, I said, this is, uh, um, I said, this is Coach Dave from Little League. And dad says, you are causing me nothing but problems and troubles. 
And I thought, oh man, we're in trouble. <laughs> if the parent is going to answer the phone, taking their child's position like that, we're in trouble. And I talked to him for a long time. He said, uh, my son is as good as yours. He made the all-star team as 10-year-old. He did this. He did that. But I said, I understand your opinion. I'm the coach. My opinion is differing than your opinion. And um, so I could have kicked him off the team. And the league said I could have kicked him off the team. And I chose not to because I thought if his parents are going to try to teach him some authority and honor I'm going to try to teach it to him, right? At least he'll have some adult in his life trying to teach it to him. I don't know how well I did, but normally when you're on a team in the majors, you stay through the same team from 10, 11, 12. You are always on the same team. Well, the next year he left my team and went to another team because he thought I didn't like him. And um, the funny thing is, as a 12-year-old, as an 11-year-old on my team, he played three innings. As a 12-year-old, he played two innings the amount he had to and he still had issues with the coach over there but the good news is as my son kept in contact with him and said he turned it up being a really good man and has a wife and kids and he's doing really well and and I just was wondering you know what maybe just trying to teach the kid what it is to honor somebody else and honor authority and to Come into submission when we need to come in submission. I was just praying because I would coach him and I'd pray. His name was Joey. Like, Father, I pray for Joey and I pray that you'd minister and you would break through and you'd get through to him. And if there's other adults in his life, that they would be trying to do the same thing. And the Bible tells us to do it. It's our job as parents to try to instill that and tell them how to do it. And uh, sometimes if parents won't do it, then maybe other people around who love will try to step in and help out and do that. But we need to we need to honor the Lord. And the Bible says we need to honor each other. It says in Romans 13, 7, Rend to, render to all what is due them. Tax to whom tax is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And I'll give you a few more, a couple more scriptures, and we'll talk about it just for a little bit. 1 Corinthians 12, 22 through 26. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, give more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. If you remember 1 Corinthians chapter 12, they're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, they're talking about tongues, and that is a lesser gift. And there are lesser gifts and greater gifts. And yet God bestows who He will and gives them to us. And as he gives those to us and we use them, it's not a hierarchy. It's a, it, God just gives us different gifts and talents and different spiritual gifts. And he, then he wants us to use that for his kingdom and his glory. We have a tendency to try to make everything up and down like he's the boss. And you know what? We're a family here. And so when someone in the family is, gets honored, we all rejoice with them. And that's the way it should be in family. And so here he says, and the lesser people, whatever you want, however you want to find that in society, we need to lift up. We need to love just as much. We need, they need to be a part as anybody else. We're not better than anybody. We're all on the same playing field, basically. And God loves us all exactly the same. He doesn't love me more than he loves you. I haven't figured out why yet, but that's what he says, so I believe him. He doesn't love me anymore. He loves you exactly the same way he loves me. He loves us all the same. And as Christians, because we're told to honor each other, that means we're to love each other the same way. That's what God's word tells us to do, that we are to love each other the same way. And by doing that, we are honoring each other. So what does it really look like to honor those around us? 
Well, it says in Philippians 2, starting with verse 3, Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being a found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. All conceit is empty. All raising ourselves up above people is empty. There's nothing there. But with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Remember, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. That's true humility. It's not that I think any less of who I am as a person. It's that I just think it's all about God. It's all about Christ. And I want to be honoring him. And this is how he tells me how I honor him. By counting others more important than myself. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus said, Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life a ransom for many. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, he came to serve, to serve in such a way that he gave his life so that we can have true abundant life. He's our example. He's the one who's living it. He's the one who's showing us. He's the one who counted all of us more important than himself, the King of kings and Lord of lords. That's what he did. And he said, you know what? I'll leave heaven. I'll come down. I'll become a man. I'll become fully man and fully God. And I'll do that because I love you so much. And then he says, take what I show you and live it. Honor each other and honor me. How different would this world look if every person on this planet knew Jesus Christ? How different would this world look if every Christian was sold out, living their lives in such a way, saying, I want to honor you first, Lord. I want to do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. I want to think as everybody else is more important than myself. I want to put others before me, others above me. I want to serve. I want to help. Maybe our arguments and fights would be about who gets to serve the most. Who gets to help the other person the most. How different would this world look if the church lived like God wants us to live? Honor him in all of who you are, of all of what you do. Put him first. Honor him. Christianity is all about Christ. We need to die to ourselves. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh by the faith in the Son of God. What's that? Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified. We've been crucified, church. We're dead. Now we're there to be servants, to place other, and to honor him, and then to honor each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you that you love somebody like me enough to die on that cross for me, to shed your blood for me, Lord, because I know what a true rascal I am, and you still love me anyway, Lord, and I thank you for it.
And Father, I'm not perfect in my walk with you. And I cry out to you again, Lord, I need your help. I need your Holy Spirit living through me at all times, Father. Because when I rely on my own understanding, it's never good. Help me to put my trust in you so much and so deeply, Lord, that when you say who's going with me, I'll crawl on your shoulders and we'll just allow you to carry me, Lord. <clears throat> and Father, I pray that maybe your Holy Spirit would really take this message and, uh, and, and, and penetrate our hearts and our minds this morning, Lord Jesus. And if there's areas in our life where we're not honoring you, Lord, that you would just just illuminate that this morning, Lord, so brightly that we could see it and just cry out and confess and just run back into your loving arms in those areas, Lord. And while everybody's praying and everybody has their eyes closed, I want to give you an opportunity to accept the Lord. Chances are every person in this room already knows him and has a personal relationship, but I don't know that 100% for Sure. So if you're here this morning and you've never accepted the Lord, today is your day of salvation. And I just want you to stand up and walk down front. We'll pray together. You can invite him in. He'll come in. Be the best decision you ever make your whole life. It's one you'll look back on and be so thankful for. Anybody here like to do that this morning? Then, Father, I pray that every person in this room has a personal relationship with you, Lord Jesus. And for, one, for every one of us who we do have a personal relationship with you, Lord, that we will give to you and honor you from our wealth and from the first of produce and the first fruits, Lord Jesus. And that we would be a people who want to honor you in everything. And if you're watching me on YouTube, and you want to accept the Lord this morning, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I've spent my life trying to honor myself and bring me glory. And I've just messed up my life. I need you. I want you. I confess my sin to you. I ask that you wash all my sin away. Make me white as snow. Come into my life right now. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me and empower me to be a kingdom changer for your kingdom on this earth. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand and worship him.